let's continue with the uh, recursion. Uh, last time, I think we reached this section. We are discussing about some of the variants of the recursion. So there are some other variants for the recursion. I guess you already learned the first type of recursion. If you still remember the linear recursion. So the linear recursion is on the uh, step by step from one step to another stage. And then yeah, you will return back to the initial stage. In this section, we are going to learn tail recursion and the binary recursion method. Actually, there is another recursion type, which is multiple recursion, but I will not discuss this. I will just discuss the tail and binary recursion. What is the meaning by tail recursion? If you refer to the word tail, So tail means the last. We have usually head and tail. So head is the first, tail is the last. We want to say this is like yeah, tail or we want to say it is from the last. The third recursion occurs when a linearly recursive method makes it recursive call as its last step. So an example is the array reversal method. If you still remember when we are doing with the swap array. Okay, if you still remember what I explained about this one. If we have a kind of list, okay? if we have a like number, two, three, five, uh, or six, for example. So I want to swap. Okay? I want to swap. So the result at the end will, will be six, four, five, and then three, and then two. So I want to swap and the final result should be like this one. How will you do with the algorithm? What, are, what kind of algorithm that you can use is uh, one of them is the reverse array. So you can give the position of I and you can give the position of J and then you can do the swap like what we already learned before. As long as i is less than j. So if it is the index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. If i is less than j, 0, less than 4, then yeah, you will do swapping. And then it will go like 1 and, and 3. And then you do swapping. If it is already in the 2, 2 and 2, yeah, 2 is not less than two, then we stop. So this reversing array, we call this is using the linear recursion. If, yeah, those kind of methods can be easily converted to non-recursive methods, Non-recursive methods, it means yeah, you can do with the general loop. For example, when you do the factorial, the factorial method is available with the general loop. You can do with loop function, but you can make with the recursion method. Then, if we are doing with the iterative reverse array, okay, the input is an array and it is a non-negative integer in this i and j. 
and the output is the reversal of the element A starting at index I and ending at index J. So what you can do here is, now I'm not using the recursion, but I can convert it to while loop. While I is less than J. Then do swap I plus one and then J will be minus one. So this method is similar with what we already did before. So if I is less than J, then swap. And then do the reverse array, the index A and then I plus one and then j minus one okay so the idea is the same therefore if you can make this kind of recursion into this non-recursive method mostly we call this is the tail recursion okay not all this kind of problems can be converted to the loop function, but some of them can be converted. And we call this is the variant of the tail recursion. There is another kind of recursion method, we call it binary. We have the binary recursion methods. It is a method wherever there are two recursive calls for its non-base case. I think you remember non-base. In every recursion, we will have a base case. So if we have non-base case, it means yeah, it will be still repetitive until you reach the base. There is a problem here. At all the numbers in an integer array A, for example, yeah, like this array, when I want to do the addition, sum, okay, I want to sum all this number, but what I want to do is not a linear sum, the linear sum is adding all those numbers from index 0, index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4. So it is just linear. But now I'm going to use the binary sum. The binary sum is similar to what you already learned about the binary search. We have a kind of index and then we split the index. So we split the number based on this index. It is on the left and this is on the right. And after we have those numbers, that means after we have, let's say we, we want to have this one as the splitting, left, right. And then again, we will have this as split left right and then we have another this as this left and right so we have like this one from zero until eight we split two from the index zero until index four and then we have the index four starting from index four until the remaining four And then we split again index zero until index two, and then from index two and the additional two numbers. So we have yeah, from index zero and we have one number and we have the index one with one element, and then we add them. We can use this kind of recursion. In this case, if n equals to 1, then 
we have the element only one. It will return the A index I. But if not, we will do the binary sum where A is in the index I and N is divided by 2. So if we have like 8, then we will divide with 2. Then here we have 4 on the left. And then we want to have I plus N divided by 2. So I, if it is 0, then it will be 0 plus, let's say, 4. And then we have the N divided by 2. So it means the additional index that we want to check after the middle index. We know that this is recursion, so we will return back to the matter. Because we have 1 and 2, like this one, we have the left and right, because this is binary recursion. So I would like to give this binary recursion. At first, we split number. Yeah, maybe for easy understanding, I just put the eight number here. We split the four on the left and we split the four on the right. And then we split into half again, two on the left and two on the right on both sides. And then we have one on the left, we have one on the right. After we have one, it's of this, what we call as node, then we will return back. Let's see. Uh, sorry, I forgot to check whether we have this element or not. Let's see. The Okay, so this is one example. Yeah. If you want to check about the binary sum, so this is one example about the binary sum. And as we learn about this website, you can check the step by step. So you can click next to find out the step by step and how the algorithms work to split all of the first element into half and then next into half and next into half until we get the result which is the summation okay, so you can run by yourself On the binary sum, you can apply the descending sort. Uh, it is different, okay? When you do the summation, it means you want to add those numbers. Okay, what, what does it mean by sum? Sum means you want to add the numbers. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7, okay? Plus 8 plus... 9 plus 12 plus 14. So it is different with sub thing problem. Okay, it's different. Now the problem is how we do the summation. If you check later on the sorting problem, yeah, there are some algorithms to do the sorting. And yeah, you can do both ascending or descending, okay, depending on the problem itself. Is it okay? Thank you for your questions. So the binary sum cannot be applied to the sending sort. It's different. Okay. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, there's one student who sent a private message to me about whether the binary sum algorithms can be applied to descending sort. So my answer is, uh, it is not available. It's a different problem. There's another kind of uh, recursion. If you join the computer programming, you will notice about one problem, which is Fibonacci. The Fibonacci number is a number that will is a sequence number where the next number is the addition of the two previous numbers. One plus one, it will be two. And the next number will be the addition of the previous two numbers. So it will be three. And the next number will be five. And the next number will be eight. <coughs> and so on. So we can define F0 or the starting number is 0. And then the starting next number is 1. So the index 0 is 0 and index 1 is 1. And I would like to give a formula. Fi will be Fi minus 1 plus Fi minus 2. And this is valid for i, which is greater than 1. So I can make the recursive algorithm like this one. So you can see that I do not use while loop. I use if. So I hope that until now you already understand if and while loop or for loop. Here I have a base. Yeah, let's assume the input is non-negative in the k and the output is the k binary the Fibonacci number. So k is equal to 1, then return k. It means yeah, if it is 1, then just return 1. If not, then I would like to apply the binary fib k minus 1 plus binary fib k minus 2. So this is also possible. However, you need to check this recursive calls. Even though it is possible with the binary recursion methods, but when you do the analysis, when n equals to 0, you will have only one time. When n equals to 1, you will have one operation. When n equals to 2, okay, so there will be yeah, n plus 1 plus n 0 plus 1 time. So there might be about three operations. When n equals to 3, yeah, there might be around yeah, n2. n2 is 3 operation and then plus n1 plus n plus 1. So it might be about 5 operation. And you can check okay, for the remaining numbers. When we have n equals to 8, there is a the operation time will reach about 6. The seventh operations. What can we see from here? Yeah. When the n k, yeah. you have the k, which is the number of uh, the data that you want to fit into the algorithm. The operation will like double. Yeah. So approximately here we have 8, and here we have 67. So it's like 8, like multiplied by 8. Okay. So it's like double. Then whenever we have like n k like this one, the problem will be somehow we can put it as the exponential. So when we have n 8, it is like 2, 8 divided by 2. Okay. It is more than this one. Okay. Then 
this is the exponential problem. If this is an exponential problem, it means the computational time is very high, is high computational time. So if it is high computational time, then we cannot recommend this kind of mechanism to solve the problems. So I note this one. Using the binary recursion does not guarantee to get a better function. Okay. So some problems you can solve with recursion, but not all problems can be solved with recursion. Yeah, if you use the common Fibonacci algorithm, like using the for loop, that might be much better rather than using the binary recursion. So this is an example. I give the linear Fibonacci. So the input is still a non-negative integer, and then I have the Fibonacci numbers. And I just have a base, which is k equals to 1. And then I would like to return k from a 0. And I will consider i and j. i and j will be the linear Fibonacci k minus 1. So here I would like to give the output, which is a pair of numbers. A pair of number is the fk and fk comma one. And when I still in the loop, I will not use this piece, but yeah, I will do this kind of function. And whenever we run this function, it will return i plus j comma i. Okay, I put this as the code, this is the Python code. If n equals equals to one, then return zero comma one. Okay, so we have like two values. Is we call it is a pair. And we have a comma b equals to fifth n minus one. Okay, you you can try with the uh, print a this one uh, i put the shop it is comment okay in python we have the comment comment means yeah, you don't need to print or you don't need to execute that statement and then we have the written a plus b comma a you can try if you want this one uh, let's go to the python Tutorial here, and then yeah, you can try with this one. So there are 31 steps for this. Now I run the flip six, and then yeah, it will go to flip five, and equals to one. No. Then a comma b equals to fifth n minus one, and we will go next, which is fifth four, and then if n is not one, then we will keep reducing until the n equals to one. When n equals to one, what will you do is returning zero comma one. So zero comma one is the index 0 which is 0 and index 1 which is 1 and then yeah, we return the numbers and we will do this function return a plus b a plus b we know that we have 0 and 1 so it means 0 plus 1 so return 1 a is zero. So it is one comma zero. 
वन एंड जीरो नेक्स्ट या वी विल गो टू द प्रोवियस स्टेज वेन द एन इक्वल टू थ्री सो वी टू दिस वन एंड देन वी गो टू द नेक्स्ट लास्ट वी गेट टू द नेक्स्ट लास्ट एंड फाइनली वी विल गेट द रिजल्ट so i didn't open this print you can try when when you open this print you will get the fibonacci number okay so the whole concept about recursion you can you can see from this powerpoint we learn about the basic definition and we learn about the linear recursion and some recursion variants the properties of recursion versus iteration okay. now it is important to see this one maybe some of you uh, this is a classical question or uh, yeah, many many people ask why do we need to understand recursion because some problems can be solved with iteration people say this is elegance uh, it is easy to understand the code so in one sense the code you just use if okay if the base equals to 1 okay, you do something and then if not you do other things okay. so this is yeah pe some people say that it is easier to understand but it depends on the problem actually the performance yeah. some problems can be solved efficiently using recursion but others not debuggability Some problems in recursion are difficult to debug when it occurs errors. So if you look into the source code nowadays, there are many people share the code in the GitHub. Some of them are still using recursion. I think yeah, the the elegance of the recursion or easy to understand yeah. is good. But for the performance and the debuggability, I guess iteration is still better. Okay? But it's your choice. So we need to learn also about this concept because there are many source code, there are many algorithms in the world. They are still using recursion. Okay, any questions? <laughs> 